finally happening. This is going to be the review for the Transformers Kingdom Titan Class The Ark. And like many of you, I've been so, so excited to actually get this figure in hand. And oh boy, does it live up to the expectations. Now, we've got so much to cover in this review as the Ark has actually got so many different features that you just would not expect the Autobot ship to actually holster. So we'll very quickly begin by taking a look here at the box art. You can see a fantastic image of the Ark in his robot form based on the last Autobot. You've got him grasping Megatron. We've got the Ark actually crash landing into the volcano of course but we'll probably see in kingdom and then as we flip here to the top of the box you can see we've got a really cool image of what is the nemesis with black arachnia falling out of it you've got starscream flying just across there and you can also see the air razor is trying to take this down so is this a hint that perhaps we're going to be seeing the nemesis as the next titan class i can only hope so as i think that would be fantastic in an actual titan class format but without further ado let's get the arc open and see what the latest titan class has in store for us and so here we've got the Titan class arc as it comes packaged in the ship mode looking fantastic honestly I'm so so impressed with what Hasbro and Takara were able to pull off and who would have thought that we would have actually gotten a proper toy of the arc honestly when this was revealed my mind absolutely exploded and actually getting it in hand I'm so so happy with this particular piece now you may be able to tell that the arc is in fact massive it's actually a lot bigger than I initially suspected especially when we get him transformed in robot mode so I will try my best to show it off in its entirety throughout this review but please do excuse me if there are some slightly wonky angles so to begin with you can see we've got some fantastic surface detailing all the way throughout the arc of course this is heavily inspired from how it appeared in the g1 series although it has been slightly stylized in order to match what i imagine we'll see from the third and final chapter of the war for cybertron trilogy when it hits netflix later next month you can see we've got some really nice details here of turrets scattered all the way throughout the ship unfortunately these are static and cannot be rotated nor hinged back and forth but they are really really cool looking you can see how we have some superb panel lining detail a mix of yellow paint as well as of course the orange plastic that the main body of the arc's been cast out of and you can see here at the back we've got some really nice details such as this section which you can actually see the window sculpted in and as we just turn our attention here to the back of the arc you can see we've got the autobot insignias actually tampoed on so these are not stickers which is fantastic can see once again some fantastic surface detailing and as we just flip here to the back you can see some incredible detail going on here for the thrusters these look fantastic i love all of the intricate wiring detail that we've got going around the different pipes and hydraulics and of course the blue colorization that we've actually got applied to the thrusters themselves really do look fantastic i think that's such a nice attention to detail especially how it sort of fades you can see how it's very heavy here in the center but then as it begins to go around the dome it does definitely become a little lighter you can see some nice detailing here at the back which looks fantastic as we spin our attention here to the side if i had any critique here with the arc it's that we do unfortunately have a massive hollow space but due to how he transforms i think this would have been near enough impossible to have actually closed up unless they included a detachable panel which then would have meant that the arc would have parts formed and i'm pretty certain that many collectors probably would have had an issue with that so i personally don't find this to be too much of a drawback and just taking a look here at the front section once more you can see some nice silver paint here in order to give you the impression that the arc is in fact battered and weathered you can see some nice metallic blue highlights scattered throughout as well overall it's just an excellent sculpted ship it really does look incredible you can see here for the cockpit you can even reveal some interior detailing which we'll take a look in just a second but overall definitely very very satisfied with the overall shape the detail as well as the subtle use of paint now turning to the arc's features we do in fact get landing gear and you can see underneath here the arc has also been sculpted and painted in some areas really really nicely so if we just flip this here to the underside of course we do have a hollow space here but honestly it's not a massive drawback at all it's a very hefty piece so honestly Hasbro and Takara haven't cheaped out at all on this and you can even see some silver here which you won't necessarily see all that much of in robot mode we've got some nice detail actually applied here to the landing gear and this can actually be retracted for if you wanted the arc actually looking a little more streamlined when of course flying in space so that is definitely an option you can do and just to show you it here from a side profile you can see it cleans up really really nicely so definitely a fantastic looking ship if i just redeploy the landing gear i will be able to show you that it does in fact have a spring loaded ramp so if we just spin here to the back you simply toggle this switch and it will deploy the ramp there which looks fantastic of course you'll have to ensure that it is tabbed together as it does split due to transformation but you can see there how it does work on some pistons and will of course collapse down unfortunately there's not a heck of a lot of room in there so you won't really be able to fit any of your core class figures in there which is slightly unfortunate although this is actually compatible with core class figures which we'll touch on in just a second but it does also include a mini optimus prime so i guess you could also place that on there and i'll be sure to post some pictures throughout this review so now that we've got the bases of the arc fully covered let's turn to some of its really special features and of course autobot mainframe so in order to actually get to mainframe you're going to want to come here to the side pry these sections up 
and of course spin here to this side and repeat the same process. Once that's complete, that will then allow you to take this section, pull this entire region forwards, which will then reveal mainframe. Now, this is such a fantastic attention to detail. You can see there we've got what is essentially a mini command deck for the arc, which is so cool. You can see the miniature Optimus Prime, which can store on mainframe in both robot mode, this mode, as well as his Teletran 1 mode, which is fantastic. And the detail that we actually get from Teletran 1 here, you may have been able to see when we took a look through the cockpit, does actually act as interior detail, which is so so awesome you can see how we've got the navigator globe which is indeed removable and for those who have picked up Haslab Unicron you could also place Galvatron and Rodimus Prime on some of those hollow spaces that you can see scattered throughout so that is really really cool mainframe can be easily removed so you simply just slide him out like so and this is where we can bring in some of the core class figures so you can take core class Optimus Prime I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not this was intentional but you can simply place him in there and there is more than enough room to actually have Prime in there of course you can then proceed to close all of this back up and you've got core optimus essentially piloting the arc of course the scale is way off but for those looking for that integration it is something that you definitely can do taking a closer look here at mainframe completely detached from the arc you can once again see the amazing attention to detail that we've actually got going on here for the command deck i think that navigation globe is a really nice touch and as mentioned can easily be removed but due to its scale i would definitely recommend leaving it ported in there and for those who picked up the century and drone accessory box set you can see how we get the same optimus prime albeit this time cast out of a translucent orange plastic and then of course painted in red which is also quite a nice figure to actually have included with this especially considering that this is to scale with this command deck now as far as transformation is concerned he actually has three modes so we get this command base mode then we also get teletran one and robot mode so let me talk you through those so to begin with you're going to want to detach the legs here from the lower section we can bring these down we can then rotate here at the waist we're then going to want to proceed to split at the legs we can then bring this panel forwards which will then allow you to rotate the foot around and then just peg that back into place of course repeat the exact same process here for this side so just attach that and bring that around rotate here at the foot and then compress that back into place now what you can proceed to do is take the arms these do slot into these tabs for the torso so just attach those you can see how we've got something which looks along the lines of this you're then going to want to take this entire back piece disengage that which will then allow you to fold out mainframe's head of course rotate that around and just compress that snap that there into place bring these arms down you can see how we've got hinge joints here hinge that out fold out the wrist compress this back down and of course come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. And there you've got mainframe fully transformed up into robot mode. And quite honestly, I'm actually really surprised at how well this guy turned out. I was very surprised to see that not only were we actually getting the arc, but we were actually going to be getting a transformable version of Teletran 1. So honestly, I'm just super impressed that this guy can not only transform into Teletran 1 and of course that command station mode, but he can also transform into his own individual robot mode, which is awesome. You can see that as far as the detail is concerned, the head is incredibly distinctive, unlike pretty much anything we've seen from the War for Cybertron line so far and I love that we've got a transparent visor which when you actually get light shining through it really does give you the impression that this guy is alive. You can see an amazing amount of detail as well as paint here for the torso. Really nice decals applied to the forearms. Of course he's a little bit kibbly but that's just going to be inevitable due to how many modes he actually has and due to the nature of those modes. So you can see here for the legs I think the detail is really awesome but of course as we turn here to the back he does simply just have that command deck hanging off the back which doesn't look the best but once again certainly isn't the worst and as far as articulation is concerned surprisingly he's pretty good for a war for Cybertron deluxe so we get a rotation here at the head hinge joints at the arms although you can see the build quality isn't the best the mushroom pegs do have a tendency to fall off at least here on my copy we do get a rotation here at the bicep 90 degree bend there at the elbow no form of wrist rotation although we do in fact actually get a waist joint which is slightly compromised here in robot mode the legs can kick forwards that far as well as back to that far before of course they're hindered we can hinge out to the sides rotation here at the thigh 90 there at the knee and then of course as per tradition with war cybertron we do in fact get an anchor rocker pivot which can bend to a terrific degree and they've even sculpted and detailed this region so that when you do utilize that joint it doesn't look as if though it's just a clean dead cut so overall definitely very impressed with how this particular robot mode turned out but you can once again see that here on my copy the forearms do have a tendency to pop out of their joints now as 
far as the size comparison is concerned, here we've got mainframe compared next to Deluxe Class Wheeljack, as well as, of course, Netflix Earthrise Optimus Prime. And you can see that he's definitely a pretty big figure. Now, the Titan Arc is big in itself, so to get what is essentially an additional figure packaged in with this, really, really well done on Hasbro and Takara's part. You can see, whilst he is, of course, a little smaller than Optimus, I think he has more engineering packed into him, and you can see how he is indeed actually a little bit bigger than Deluxe Wheeljack, and I was actually expecting him to be the same size as a Deluxe, so that, once again, is a really, really nice, pleasant surprise. So definitely a very cool robot, especially when you do get the arc transformed into its bot mode. You can have him paired with the likes of Optimus and, of course, Wheeljack. But, of course, Mainframe has a third, and what is potentially the best mode, that being the capability of actually transforming into an officially licensed Teletran 1. So let's get straight into it. So to begin with, you're going to want to disengage this region here, hinge this entire section up. We can then rotate the head, collapse that down. It is here that I would recommend removing Sky Spy. So just attach him, set him there off to the side, and of course, lock this section into place. We can then come here to this section, rotate at the waist, and then here for the legs, you're going to want to detach these panels, bring this section out and over, and of course, repeat the same process. So just attach this and bring this out. We can then rotate here at the foot so that the gray section is facing forwards and repeat the exact same process, snap all of that into place. And it is here that you can bend here at the knees and you can see these two tabs will in fact peg into the slots that the knees have in fact created. So just snap that in there really securely. You're going to want to lift the arms out in order to bring this section here to the back. And of course, repeat the exact same process here. You can already see an amazing amount of detail applied to this piece. We're then going to want to turn here to the underside, take this section, which I will also mention do also have a tendency to actually fall off. I wish they could have shot a pin through that as these can be rather tedious, especially transforming him multiple times. So just hinge this up just like so until this section sits underneath that tab. And of course, come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. So just snap that in there we can then spin our attention here to the front of teletran one and with the arms you're going to want to take this hinge this down and you can see how we've got a tab that's going to peg into this slot and then this slot's going to peg there into that tab so just align this up appropriately shoot that in there come here to this side hinge that up and of course repeat the exact same process hinge this section down as well tidy everything up and then for some finishing touches you're just going to want to take the wrists and fold those in so that of course they're not protruding from the front and there you've got mainframe fully transformed up into teletran one actually looking really really impressive now you may have heard but he does actually come with two golden discs which also is a really nice attention to detail and was something that they didn't have to do these are in fact distinctive so you can see how we've got some different detailing here on the underside which is so so nice and they've been painted in an awesome metallic gold so that definitely is a super nice attention to detail and of course we've got the sounds of earth written on the back of both of them which is super super cool you also saw that we do get sky spy so that also is a really nice attention to detail of course you cannot have teletran one and the arc without giving us a sky spy so you can see how we've got some nice silver paint and the detail on this piece as well i think has turned out really really nice so definitely a very nice inclusion of course you can hinge these sections up and down mainly for storage when you do actually transform mainframe but bringing the teletran one in here for a closer look you can see some fantastic detailing as well as once again those printed on tampos these look fantastic so we've got the matrix of leadership here we've got a schematic of the arc you can see we've got the last Autobot face there which is fantastic you can see all of these different dials everything just looks really well done I'm thoroughly impressed with what they were able to achieve just with Teletran 1 slash mainframe itself of course from the side it doesn't look the best it is a little hollow but considering this guy is a proper robot the fact that he can literally flat pack like this is fantastic and I'm definitely really really impressed you can see here all of the different dials everything about this is super super cool and for a size comparison I've actually found that he works better with core class figures but I'll very quickly show you him here with deluxe wheel jacks you can see how he stacks up with him but if i bring core optimus here into the equation i actually personally think that core optimus works a little better as far as the scale is concerned especially to what we saw in the original g1 cartoon series now coming back to the arc itself before we actually delve into transformation i must mention that we do also get included a pair of blast effects now these are exactly the same as what we've seen with the likes of siege jetfire and even in that tricranius box set where we've got all of those different blast effects although this time i've been cast out of a really nice 
transparent blue plastic which looks fantastic now sadly they don't really peg into the thrusters all that well so for those who are into action figure photography i think they'll be okay for that but for those who perhaps want to leave these permanently attached to the arc you're definitely going to find that they can fall off really easily and it's just down to the simple fact that the five millimeter port is quite shallow but i will very quickly show you how they do just peg in there you can see how that looks pretty decent and of course they do break up in the exact same way as all of the other effects so you can also peg this larger one in there and then vice versa with this smaller one so transformation of course as this is a titan class figure you would expect this to be a little more complex than the likes of the leader voyager and deluxe although i've got to be honest and say that out of all of the titan figures i think this guy is probably the easiest and he's also the first that isn't a triple changer usually we get titan class figures which can transform into a base mode and then of course robot mode and then they come up with some sort of third mode but nope the arc here simply just has robot mode as well as spaceship mode so let's get straight into the conversion you're going to of course want to flip here to the underside and compress all of the landing gear if you haven't done so already so just snap all of that into place we can then come here to this section of course much like i showcased when we actually got into mainframe you're going to want to slightly lift these panels out otherwise they will actually pop off so just attach that we can then bring this entire region here up and over just like so and then you're going to want to compress that in and then snap that there into place compress this in snap that into place and here with this section you're going to want to fold these orange pieces up and then collapse that there into the torso once that's complete we can then spin here to the underside and you're going to want to take the nose cone you can see a huge slot here that will peg here into this tab so bring this entire region to the back snap that in and then you can also see here that we do have some tabs that are going to peg into these slots so bring that in and also snap that there into place we can then flip here to the top of the arc and you're going to want to take the arms here hinge these forwards until they do actually snap into place so you can see how we've got a clip system snap that into place bring this out and this also will clip into place so bring this out and snap that into place of course come here to this side and repeat the exact same process so hinge this up snap that in there and then fold this section out it is here that i would recommend rotating at the waist so rotate so that the front is now facing the back and of course vice versa you're then going to want to flip here to the top once more and fold out this trap door which will then allow you to take this section fold that into place compress this down which you'll then be able to take both of these halves and split them and fully extend out those ratchet joints as of course now we're creating the main leg section for the arc so just fold all that out rotate here at the thigh and of course repeat the exact same process here just hinge all of that down ensure that these ramp sections don't actually come detached as of course they're still spring loaded so just lock them there into place you're then going to want to take the foot section bring this down and you can see how we've got a hollow space that is in fact going to tab into this slot so pull that forward snap that in there and of course come here to this side and repeat the same process moving the camera here up to the top we can actually peg in the torso so you can see how we've got this tab here as well as this tab this is in fact going to peg into this slot here and of course this slot here and then you can also see if i turn him here to the side we've also got some slots and tabs that this entire section here is in fact going to peg into so just lock that in there and then of course give the torso a nice squeeze and that is that entire region fully locked into place we can then come here to the arms ratchet them here downwards come to the hands and this is really nice engineering it's almost like automorph so if we pull the hands down you can see how that panel will completely flex revealing some fantastic detail as well as completely fill out this hollow space which is awesome we can then take this hinge this all the way down rotate and of course rotate here at the wrist and just split the fingers bring that down come here to this side and repeat the exact same process all of that down and so here we've got the arc fully transformed up into his robot mode and certainly looking very inspired by the lost autobot which i actually think is a great concept and i'm really glad that hasbro and takara implemented it into this character now of course the arc i don't believe is never known to actually transform into a robot so this is a whole new experience and personally for me i think it's fantastic i really hope this is a concept that we can see realized in kingdom and if not then it will definitely be a little disappointing but as far as the figure is concerned he looks great now i do apologize for the unsightly nature of the review 
review station has mentioned this guy is massive so of course we'll bring him in for a closer look in just a second but you can see that as far as the main robot is concerned I think proportion wise everything works very very well if I just turn him here to the side he's a little thin when in comparison to some of the previous titans but what you've got to bear in mind is that we are also getting mainframe which has got a lot of engineering packed into him and to be honest with you I actually don't think this looks too bad at all as we spin around here to the back you can see some nice detailing and I do actually like how some of the panels do fill out with additional detail which you don't actually see in shuttle mode such as the back of the arms here and of course the back of the legs so that's a really nice attention to detail in my opinion and you can also see some nice detail here on the back whilst we've got this full shot of course we'll bring out some comparisons now so you can see the art compared next to Earthrise Optimus, Wheeljack and of course that tiny core class Optimus which to be honest I actually think the core class works perfectly with this particular scale even though it's not 100% spot on in shuttle mode here for robot mode I think it looks quite nice I actually don't think the Voyager and Deluxe figures look all that bad with this either but you can definitely see how massive he is and honestly I actually was suspecting him to be one of the smallest titans when in actual fact he's roughly exactly the same size as Omega Supreme if not a little bigger and talking of Omega Supreme here we've got a titan comparison and as mentioned before the arc is pretty much exactly the same size if not a tiny bit bigger at the top of the head when in comparison to Omega Supreme so great titan class scale here and you've also got to factor in that Omega Supreme did not come with no additional figure despite coming with the almost tank in the torso it didn't really have a lot of engineering going on for it so I definitely think that engineering wise you are definitely getting your money's worth as far as this particular titan arc is concerned and I personally am just so so impressed with how it's turned out so taking a closer look at detail as well as articulation you can see that as mentioned beforehand the head is really inspired by the last Autobot which I think works perfectly you can see a nice variety of grey so we've got an almost matched colorization of grey used here for the eyebrows as well as the crest and then a gun metal used for the actual faceplate and we've got a mixture of blue there for the mouthpiece as well as of course red there for the eyes you can see some really nice detail here from a side perspective as well as some yellow detail for the actual neck piece and the head is merely just on a swivel joint so sadly no ball joint but you do get a good range it would have been awesome if he could have actually looked down much like Scorponok but that's just a minor critique you can see the torso is essentially the front part of the spaceship so I won't cover that all that much as of course it is exactly the same detail but you can see here for the shoulders we've got the Autobot insignias as well as some nice detailing here for this actual section so that certainly does add to the overall visual appeal and as far as the articulation goes for the arms they're on very heavy duty ratchet joints going out as well as of course hinging here out to the side we do get a rotation here also on a ratchet joint at the bicep as well as a ratchet joint here which can bend past 90 due to transformation and for the fingers four of them are in fact molded together and then the thumb is also on its own separate hinge joint so a little bit bizarre as far as that's concerned but it's definitely not bad by any stretch of the imagination you can see here as we turn to the lower section we've got the almost abdomen section of the arc and I think that works quite well you can see some nice detailing here sculpted on the back of these panels which is something that you wouldn't see in ship mode so that's really really cool and we also do get a ratchet joint here at the waist which is really really awesome moving down to the lower section you can see how we've got multiple panels layered on top of each other I also think that works quite nice as well as some really nice detailing for the interior of the legs as well as here for these hip joints and we do get a superb amount of articulation so these are on ratchet joints and can kick forwards pretty much all the way up so you can certainly do a high kick definitely past 90 of course they can also kick all the way back seeing as there is nothing hindering them he can also do the split also on a ratchet joint we get a ratchet joint here at the thigh and here for the knee this can also bend slightly past 90 due to the nature of the transformation and that hollow space but that works really well and then finally here for the foot i've got to be honest and say this is a little lackluster we don't get the best range of ankle rocker which is definitely a little disappointing considering that scorponok and omega supreme are definitely vastly superior in this aspect but you can once again see really nice detailing here for the thrusters as well as for the interior of the leg as well as of course here for the outer section of the leg and so some final thoughts here for Transformers Kingdom Titan class the arc does this figure live up to the expectations and the hype that's been surrounding him ever since he really began to leak of course we've got some of those very blurry images then a few of the listings leaked online and then finally we got the grand official reveal by Hasbro and I've got to be honest and say that I absolutely think he does he's a really really cool figure and honestly the arc is something that I could never possibly imagine Hasbro and Takara Tomy replicating in a mass-produced toy so the fact that this thing even exists even now is blowing my mind I 
something that as far as the actual arc ship mode is concerned it looks fantastic very faithful to the original g1 series whilst at the same time is slightly modernized in order to fit in with the kingdom show i think it works super nice we've got an amazing amount of detail on the actual ship itself really nice variation of paint while sparingly used i think it's been used very effective and i actually think the main color of orange that they've cast the entire figure out of also works pretty well transformation for the arc is very simplistic probably down to the simple fact that he only has two modes so this is one of the first titans that's completely scrapped the city base form which i personally am all for as i never really care for those base forms anyway i think the robot mode looks really well done especially considering they are taking influence from the last autobot i think it suits the character really nicely and much like the spaceship mode despite this guy not having a ton of paint applied i think where it has been used is really effective and due to his sleek and agile design the posability options on this guy certainly are a lot better than some of the previous titans so with all that being said this guy is definitely another home run for hasbro i really really love this of course i'm going to be keeping it in the actual the arc spaceship mode but for those who want to keep it as a robot i think you'll be really happy and i would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this figure do you praise it as highly as i have here in this review or are you going to be in the actual missing this guy out i would love to know down in the comment section below as always i think you'll be really happy so much for watching